Ben Volan covers the Patriots for the Boston Globe, covered them for a long time. Used to cover the Dolphins, by the way, and the Florida Gators down there for the Palm Beach Post, which is, by the way, one of the great writer gigs in the country. That's, that's good living down there. Okay, so let's start with the Patriots. <laughs> so um, I came out and I said, listen, part of free agency, it's a little like college recruiting. you got to put on your salesman hat. It's just, you know, NFL coaches, mostly the ones that stay in the NFL, they don't want to do the recruiting crap. They don't like it. But you have to do it for free agency. you got to sell your vision. And, and I said, with D-Hop, they have a number one quarterback. Belichick's a legend. Bill O'Brien's a great offensive coach. Steady offensive line. Not run dominant. It felt like an easy sell to D-Hop. He chooses a team that doesn't have a vision at quarterback. O-line was in peril last year. Run dominant. Most of their best players are on defense. So it felt like to me, Bill, sell your vision. Although Patriot fan could argue it was all about the money. Do you believe the Patriots, it was all about the money. They sold their vision clearly and D-Hop didn't care. I don't think the Patriots sold their vision clearly because I do think it was about the money. And I don't think, Colin, that the Patriots were ever totally serious about DeAndre Hopkins, certainly not being the top bidder. Because I think that's pretty clear why he chose the Tennessee Titans. That was the best offer he was going to get. And per reports and everything out there, the Patriots weren't even really that close. They weren't even in the ballpark. And that's, that's been Bill Belichick's MO, certainly at wide receiver uh, throughout his, his tenure with new England. They'll, they'll get guys like a Randy Moss, but they won't pay him. They'll get Randy Moss on a bargain contract. I think, look, you also have to consider Mac Jones is not the best sell. You know, it's not like the Patriots have the most dynamic offense. Belichick is not known to be the most fun uh, coach to play for. Um, DeAndre Hopkins has a history with Bill O'Brien, probably not all great. Uh, O'Brien traded Hopkins away and they supposedly didn't have such a great relationship. So those things could have been overcome if the Patriots were really serious about trying to get DeAndre Hopkins. And I think all they had to do was just increase their offer by a couple more millions and they could have had a number one receiver. But yeah. once again, they keep their, their checkbook closed and they let Hopkins go to another team and they give Mac Jones you know, a pretty mediocre, uh, not an uninspired, not an inspiring list of, of weapons to work with. Yeah, Devontae Barker, by the way, last three years is the least capable receiver in the league, three straight years of separating. So again, you're putting stress on Mac Jones to have a new coordinator, no number one receiver, and re-signing Devontae Parker, who simply doesn't separate. I don't love the support system for Mac Jones. I will say this. I, th I said this earlier about Saquon Barkley. Um, I would have franchise tagged Daniel Jones, and then I would have told Saquon, listen, we're not going to give you a new deal yet. He would have been unhappy. But now he's resentful because if you look at the numbers on Daniel Jones, he isn't just better with Saquon. He's completely reliant on him. When Saquon plays with Daniel, his passer rating's in the 90s. He's got a 3-to-1 TD to interception ratio. When Saquon doesn't play, he's a backup. He's a 77 passer rating, more picks than touchdowns. So when you give the bag to the less talented player, I think it creates resentment. I would have franchise tagged Daniel Jones and just had an unhappy Saquon Barkley, not a resentful one. So there's a, I mean, your takeaway from the outside looking in, the Giants, Belichick's history, what do you make of what they did in New York and the running back situation we have in the National Football League? Yeah, Colin, I totally see what you're saying as, as far as Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley being disgruntled. But if Barkley is comparing himself to a quarterback as far as what he's going to make, that, that's just not realistic. That, that's You have to, to live in reality here. The quarterbacks in the NFL get paid. And while Daniel Jones did get a big bag of cash, he's still, what, like the 10th or 12th highest paid quarterback? It's not like they put him in Patrick Mahomes territory. I don't know the exact numbers of what Saquon Barkley turned down, but the giants were willing to give him a multi-year deal. Yeah, they and it were sounds like the sides weren't that far off. So they were going to make him one of the higher paid running backs, just not as high paid as he wants. And look, I get it. I understand it. But if you're Saquon Barkley, you have to live in reality. You're like, you're a running back, which means you're like an automobile. There is straight line depreciation every single year that you play football. Yeah. And no matter how, no matter how well he plays this year, he's not going to have more value next year. He's going to be a year older and with a year of more hits and more uh, less tread on the tires. So I get it. He's disgruntled. He wanted more money, but you can't be comparing yourself to guys at other positions. That's just not realistic. It sounds like the Giants were willing to make him one of the highest paid running backs. That wasn't good enough for Saquon Barkley. So J-Mac and I went back and forth on this yesterday. I said, I think billionaires are very comfortable telling even good employees we're moving off you. 
Um, I mean, I, I, I work at a company, the Murdochs moved off their movie division, highly successful, very profitable. They looked at the future of cinemas streaming and said, we're moving off movies. Uh, that, that was like, whoa. But when you're a business person, an entrepreneur and have been successful, you're comfortable. Robert Kraft has had to move off multiple employees in his life. I don't think, I don't think it's a situation with Belichick. If he has a losing record, they're clearly the fourth most talented team in their division. I could see him firing Bill. I don't think it's outrageous. I really don't. J Max, like you can't say you're fired to Bill Belichick. Um, where do you land on that? Where do Patriot fans land on that? Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, even from what you hear kind of behind the scenes that there's a lot of pressure on Bill Belichick to perform this year. Now that's kind of a nebulous criteria. Um, making the playoffs will make his life a lot easier. Uh, if they go nine and eight, but miss the playoffs, I think he's probably safe. If they have a losing record again, if Mac Jones has another sideways season and the offense isn't better and the team is boring again, I definitely think Belichick is on the hot seat and there's a chance uh, that he doesn't come back next year. Now, again, I, I think it would have to be a disastrous kind of season, uh, but seven and 10 and Mac Jones screaming at the coaches again. Like I definitely think that could happen. Bill Belichick uh, is 18 wins away from tying Don Shula. And he's also entering his 49th season. So next year is a huge year for him, right? His 50th season coaching and he could break Shula's record, but he's just uh, uh, Kraft's not just going to give him that opportunity. If they go six and 11 or seven and 10, right. And it's a disaster after, you know, last year, uh, the bizarre decision to put Matt Patricia in charge of the offense, to go into a few seasons ago with Cam Newton as your quarterback and not try harder to find a quarterback there. Belichick has had some head scratching uh, decisions and roster building moves since Tom Brady has moved on. And the team has been very mediocre. They're one of the least sexy teams in the NFL right now. So if it's another season like that, get five years without a playoff uh, win for the Patriots. I, I definitely think Belichick's going to be on the hot seat this year. And that's just not me talking. I've talked to a couple of people who are his friends who have been in the building within the last few years. They're worried that he's on the hot seat too this year. Yeah, I see eight and nine. What say you? Where do they land? At best, maybe nine and eight. I do think they're a little bit better. I like the Juju Smith-Schuster signing. I think he's going to give them a nice physical presence over the middle. Bill O'Brien should make the offense a little more cohesive and coherent and just certainly less dysfunctional than last year. Um, so I do think the Patriots are going to surprise some teams and, and be competitive, but they play in a brutal division. And frankly, the entire AFC is just stacked. And it's it's hard to, when you put them up on, on paper against other teams, they just don't have the horses. They have a very dull roster with a lot of B-level players. They're, they're missing the superstars, and I just don't know how I feel about the quarterback either. So, yeah, 8-9, and 9-8, nine, nine and eight, they're going to be right in that area. And if that's what it is, Robert Kraft's going to have an interesting decision to make after the season. Ben Volan, good stuff. Updates on the Giants and the Patriots. Ben, as always, continued success. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.